Hey everybody, Austin back again with another long play video. Today it's going to be Gun Force for the Super Nintendo. Now Gun Force is a conversion of an arcade game by the same name by Irem. And uh, you know, the Super Nintendo version, it's just yet another uh, entry in a long string of arcade to Super Nintendo conversions that is lacking. It's not uh, the best arcade to home conversion out there by any means, and as a result, Gun Force and the Super Nintendo is actually a bit of an average uh, sort of run-and-gun shooter. Um, there's some enjoyment to be had here. It can be fun the first few times you play it, uh, just because it is something kind of different. It's not exactly Contra. It's not exactly Metal Slug. It's... Um, yeah, it's it's not even really Turrican, even though that's kind of different. It's it's an interesting little sort of experiment on the Super Nintendo. Uh, now the arcade version of Gun Force was actually pretty sweet. It actually had some pretty cool visuals, lots of uh, crazy blinking effects and stuff like that to give people epileptic seizures, I'm sure. And um, it was a lot of fun to play. It was very fast. Uh, there was l not that much slowdown, if I recall correctly. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Most of the good things in the arcade version were kind of lost in transit uh, when it came to Super Nintendo. I mean, as you could see already, there's a lot of slowdown in this game. It's a very sluggish game on Super Nintendo. Uh, in some games, I usually just, you know, let that slide because, like, Super R-Type, and I mentioned that in previous Let's Plays or Long Plays, and, uh, you know, where I don't mind a game slowing down so much if everything else is good, like the music kicks ass, uh, the graphics are really nice, uh, the explosions are cool, and just the general gameplay and level design and whatnot is fun and clever, you know? Games like Super R-Type have that. Uh, Gun Force, unfortunately, does not. So what you're left with is this sort of average, really, really sluggish run-and-gun experience. So, now with my sort of <laughs> pseudo-review portion out of the way, uh, you know, Gun Force, it's a very uh, basic game. It's not too complicated if you've ever played something like Metal Slug or Contra or something like that. Uh, you can pretty much shoot in uh, several directions, pretty much all eight directions. And um, what I highly recommend doing when you play this game is constantly shooting diagonally in one direction or another, either up or down, depending on if there are platforms above you or below you. Uh, stage two, and I believe stage four or five, uh, those are perfect examples of stages you want to be shooting diagonally a lot, especially upwards, because there's going to be a lot of guys uh, hanging from windows and shooting down at you, or hanging on ledges and whatnot. Um, so, what I do as I progress to the right, um, or left occasionally, and there's a few portions in the game where you actually move left instead of right, um, is constantly aim up or down diagonally. And that'll pretty much just destroy any enemy right as they come in on the screen. And uh, so that definitely makes life a little bit easier in this game. Uh... Now, the reason I say that is when I was actually doing warm-ups for this game, I found the ways I died the most was by being careless and getting shot by enemies from above because they shoot directly downwards, diagonally at you. And uh, the second they get in the screen, as you can see right there, is you can also try to pick them off from a distance, which makes life a lot easier. So that's definitely what I recommend doing uh, if you're playing this game. Now, one of the cool things about Gun Force, especially the arcade version, is you can get on, like, turrets, you can, you know, man helicopters and jeeps and whatever, and a lot of them have uh, turrets that you can fire. Um, like, this one has a laser turret, which is pretty cool. I don't... In some instances, I actually don't even recommend running on these things, because, for instance, right here, I'm on this thing, but the laser can't even shoot the guy that's on the ground. So... You know, it's something you really only want to think about controlling if you're in a two-player game. Because one of the cool things about Gun Force is it is two players at the same time. So, you know, people that are fans of co-op run-and-gun shooters might actually want to give the game a try because it is two players at the same time. It's probably actually more fun uh, cooperative than it is solo. I mean, I'm the kind of person where I prefer to play solo in my games. Uh, these kinds of games, anyway. And, uh... I just have, I feel like I have more control over the game, it's a little more challenging, but uh, I think Gun Force is actually the kind of game where it would actually be a little more enjoyable uh, with another player. So, uh, especially where one guy can get on, say, a turret, and the other guy can just run on foot. So, you know, so you don't be that guy stuck on the turret, not able to attack every enemy on the screen, because your bullets go over the enemy's heads. <laughs> so... 
Now, uh, one thing to note is when you're playing this game, special weapon ammunition is limited, and you can see the sort of icon next to the next to the uh, the clock at the top of the screen, and it's ticking down very rapidly every time I uh, use my firepower. So that is something to be aware. When you have something like Bazooka or Baz for short, as they call it in the game, <laughs> it's uh, you definitely don't want to just constantly mash the attack, especially with Bazooka, because it's the most powerful weapon in the game. You could just take down bosses so quickly with this weapon, it's ridiculous. So, as you can see, as I'm going through, I'm not just mashing Baz, I'm just tossing out one bullet uh, here and there, and uh, because I want to conserve that ammunition. I want to try to get to the boss with Baz, because, like I said, it's the most powerful weapon in the game, so... Picked up the flamethrower. That was actually some bad hit detection there. I didn't even touch it. And uh, it registered as me grabbing it. So, that sucked. <laughs> so this boss, you've got a bunch of guys sitting at the top of the windows. They drop these grenades. So what I like to do is take out a couple of them. And then go straight for the turrets or the machine guns. Just free up enough space to where you can go for that eyeball at the top. But always go for these guys in the windows first because... You don't want to have a grenade dropped on your head while you're trying to defeat the core. And that's how a lot of bosses are in Gun Force. They're not really bosses per se. They're, it's it's kind of like uh, in Super Contra or Contra 1 where occasionally a boss is just like a hole in the wall. And you just have to shoot that. You know, or it's like a core in the ceiling and there's just a few turrets protecting it. You know, Gun Force is a little bit like that in terms of its level design or boss design. Except that pretty much every boss in the game is like that, except for maybe the final boss. Um, so, uh, the the weak points of bosses in this game are usually very stationary, and they just have a bunch of enemies coming at you from uh, both sides, or above you, or below you, or whatever. So, it's not exactly the most exciting boss designs. So, uh, you really shouldn't have any problems with the bosses in this game if you're familiar with run and gun shooters like Contra or Metal Slug or uh, something like that, or the NES Contras especially. So, uh, the parts that'll probably give you the most trouble in Gun Force is the level design. And like right here, there's a guy up there that was shooting directly down diagonally. And uh, when I was doing my warm up games, he was actually catching me off guard every single time I got here. So, I made a point to just stop and just aim up diagonally. And he was shooting even before he was fully on the screen, so that is something you have to be aware of. And on this part, if you want to take these sort of platforms over on those lines, it's risky, because you've got these guys shooting down diagonally at you, and these platforms with the turrets, they move very slow, so you are going to get hit. It, there's no if, and, or buts about it. You are going to get hit. So, uh, yeah. Look how slow that moves. It's just, uh oh, So slow. <laughs> but if you're doing two-player mode, one guy could be on the bottom one, and one guy could be on the top one, which is kind of cool. But, you know, the sort of, like, multiple paths you can take on a single-screen space, really, it doesn't really have much of an impact when you're just playing solo, because you're only going to want go one route, and no one route is usually better than another in this game. It's just they're both a means to an end, I guess. So. And as you can see, when you're on ladders, you can shoot, which is nice, I have to admit. And here's our boss. Extremely easy boss. Just shoot the guys as they come up. Uh, the weak point are the sort of satellites at the top. Not a big deal at all. Especially when you have a special weapon. I mean, when you're stuck with just your regular machine gun, you know, it's not a problem, but it will take a little bit longer to kill bosses. So, something to be aware of you do have uh, auto fire power, uh, basically, a sort of like a rapid fire machine gun. And um, I actually don't recommend picking that up because it, you can actually shoot faster by just mashing the button as quickly as you can. So,. I prefer not to actually grab the automatic machine guns in this game. So we, we are officially over halfway through the game, guys. We, you know, Gun Force is not a very long game at all. And, uh, not a very long game at all. 
And uh, yeah, we're on stage four already. Then we're pretty much at the final stage. And those guys, those white guys, they don't really do anything. They just sit there, they take a lot of hits, and then they just die. It's just like, what is the point of those enemies? They just... <laughs> they're like human shields. It's just like, we're going to protect the next guy that only takes one hit behind me. I don't, I don't really get it. Maybe that's just like shoddy level design and enemy placement. Maybe this game wasn't really thought out that well, at least the Super Nintendo version. <laughs> Now, one thing I'm going to have to look up is, uh, in the credits of this game, you guys will see this when I beat the game, is it's got a, a couple of, uh, or at least the development team consisted of someone that was not in Japan. Uh, I don't know if they're from Europe or if they're from America, but, um, I found that really interesting when I beat this game because IREM usually, you know, they're associated with Japanese developed games. At least I have always associated with them associated them with Japanese developed games, but Gun Force apparently was not Japanese developed, at least the Super Nintendo version. I'm not sure about the arcade version though, and I kind of want to look into that because the arcade version was really cool. I still like to play the arcade version. You know, it had really flashy grip visuals. Everything you shot would blink. There was a lot more animation when stuff blew up. It was really cool looking. Uh, everything was just extremely detailed, and the Super Nintendo version was not, and um... Uh, I'm kind of curious if the arcade version was also developed by that same team. Um, it'll be interesting to know. See, I was wondering if maybe the original game was actually developed by a Japanese studio. And maybe it was just converted to the home by an, like an American or European studio that wasn't perhaps as <laughs> well-known or experienced. Uh, Hence the sort of, like, average conversion and gameplay. But I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, if the arcade version was done by this same studio that actually ported the game, you know, it would be really interesting to know why they chose the Super Nintendo to convert the game to. I mean, just, it's so sluggish. Just, ugh. Now, granted, we are playing this on normal mode, guys. We're not playing this on hard mode. Now, there is a hard mode, so... Uh, the game might be a little more exciting on hard mode. I had considered doing the long play on hard mode, but uh, I was just like, no, nah, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, stick it out with normal mode. Um, so we are playing on normal mode. And that boss was a joke. <laughs> what a joke. But it's okay, because we're on the final stage now. And between each stage, you have these sort of intermission sequences that are pretty much identical. They say, I have destroyed this, I will infiltrate this. And rinse and repeat, they just kind of say the same thing over and over again. And, uh, I don't even really know the purpose of them. The guys that they had displayed on those intermission sequences look really goofy. Whereas the guys in gameplay actually look kind of cool. But, uh... <laughs> One other quirk uh, or issue I had with the game, not so much the game, but it was the art design of the cartridge in the in the box in America. It just looks like a a, a third rate like <laughs> B-rated movie. It's really terrible artwork. It's got to be some of the worst artwork in the Super Nintendo, at least in terms of America. Uh, the Japanese artwork is actually pretty cool though. It's all hand drawn. It's uh it's very detailed. It uses the same uh, character, uh, you know, format as you see on those intermission sequences, but they actually look pretty cool on the Japanese box art with how they're drawn, and it looks like a very action-packed, you know, sort of box art. Well, the American version is just like, <laughs> it's got these guys on the front cover that aren't even in the game, and it's just, whoever drew that, uh, whoever was commissioned to do that box art should have been fired. It was pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> It's definitely up there with some of the worst box art in the system, I think. Especially when you consider what the actual game looks like. Like, the Japanese version actually kind of captured that, and, uh... So, yeah. Now, this is arguably the hardest part in the game. You've got these sort of arms that come out of the wall, and they shoot in pretty much, like, eight ways. It's either up, down, left, right, or diagonally in all four directions. And they just keep coming. 
and uh, it's really hard to progress through here. So what I try doing is just taking them out from a distance one by one. The problem is with that is your time. You have a very limited amount of time. And I didn't even realize that until my time pretty much ran out. So I ended up dying here actually a couple of times. This is pretty much the only part in the game where I die. I think I might die at the final boss as well. Which is actually coming up very shortly. So, you know, when I had this game as a kid, I actually owned this game back in, I'd say, 5th or 6th grade. Maybe even 7th grade or something like that. Um... I don't remember this part even being like this. Like, I remember the design, but I don't remember the turrets coming out. Um, and, I, you know, I don't ever remember having a problem beating this game. Like, I beat it the very first night I had it. I sh hell, I think I beat it, like, the first hour I had it, literally. It was not a very difficult game. Even for me back then, uh, much, much younger in my life. Um, so, I don't remember ever having a problem at this part. I don't know what I did back in the day. Just, did I just push forward, you know, hard? Did I just, you know, nothing came out? Or did I just jump over everything and not die like I did right there? Uh, if you're familiar with this game, if you played it before, let me know how you get past this part without dying. I would love to know. Not that I'm really ever going to play this game again, but I would like to know either way. Uh, just for future reference. So. Died again. Yeah, I mean, this part could be kind of rough. It's... yeah. <laughs> I still have two lives left, though. Uh, I still have two lives left, so... <laughs> we should be plenty to get through this, uh, this next section. There's always a lone box there that doesn't really have anything in it. Same with that one. It's like, why are you gonna tease me, guys? Give me some boxes with ammunition, damn it. <laughs> And this part doesn't make any sense to me. And this is actually promoed on the back of the box. Like, they, they focus on that sort of walker. And you get it for literally, like, four seconds. And that's it. <laughs> Alright, so on this part, this is the final boss. Uh, you basically want to destroy him at the top. And then after you destroy uh, his bubble, at least, you can shoot the bottom portion. All while taking out his little minions at the same time. And I'm actually having kind of a hard time, because I think when I got here the first time, I actually had a weapon. I think I just magically got a weapon on that screen prior. Do you want to sit here and just fire up at him? That'll make life a lot easier. And those little walking guys, they can't really do anything unless they get close to you and shoot diagonally. So you just kind of want to wait <laughs> for them to walk away. And then just pummel the boss with your firepower. Just like that. And your guy always fires one bullet up right there. I never really understood that. Like, every time you beat the game, pow, one bullet up. It's like, okay. <laughs> oh, this is one of the greatest endings ever made. What brave fighters you are. Thanks to your heroic deeds, Mother Earth has been saved from the evil invaders. And peace has returned to the land. All right. Okay. Sure. Um... So yeah, there you go. Gun Force A Bits Production, written by Tony Smith, assisted by David Quinn, graphics by Tahir Rashid and Martin Wheeler, sound by Martin Simpson, produced by I can't even pronounce that. Special thanks to can't pronounce that either. Alan I don't know. Trademark and copyright IRAM 1992. See, it's definitely not done by a, a Japanese studio, so I'm really curious uh, I'm going to have to look up Bits Production and see what else they did. Because that name does not ring a bell for me. And, um, yeah, not at all. So, I wonder if the arcade version was done by the same people. Um, but the arcade version is so much better. That's the thing. Like, I wonder if the original arcade version was developed in Japan. Because it does have a very Japanese arcade vibe to it. Um, in terms of the detail and whatnot. Um, and then maybe Bits did the home conversion. And Bits was not a Japanese studio. So, but anyway, guys, there you go. Gun Force for the Super Nintendo. Full and long play of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to let you go now. I'll be back with some more videos sometime soon. And until then, guys, take care.